Hey, Blake T. Wild here, and I am talking about Venom. V v v Venom, Venom, knock, knock, let the devil in. You know, that, that guy, that, uh, from the hit Eminem <laughs> music video from 2018. Um, because, you know, Venom 3 is on its way, and that's an inevitability that we all have to face. Uh, just like death or taxes or the sun that will one day expand and destroy the Earth, just like how the Spider-Man Sony universe is slowly expanding. Um, so I figured may as well talk about this weird sort of prelude, kind of, to Agent Venom. Agent Venom, what is that? Uh, Agent Venom was a pretty good comic series uh, from, like, the mid-2010s, I think, um, which saw Flash Thompson, who lost his legs in whatever war is popular <laughs> at that moment because of Marvel's sliding time scale. Sometimes it's, it's like the Punisher. Sometimes it's Vietnam. Sometimes it's the Middle East. Uh, sometimes it's other times in the Middle East. It's mostly been the Middle East for the past 30 years. He lost his legs. Eddie Brock lost a symbiote. He got cancer or something. Became a negative photograph version of the Venom. And the U.S. government got their hands on the symbiote. Gave it to Flash Thompson. Made him a cool soldier who's kind of like Spawn. <laughs> now that I think about it. But they also would later establish that there were symbiote soldiers and I think that was in a Venom series or a Carnage series from the past few years. I can't really remember. Um, but this comic that I'm talking about here, it's kind of a predecessor to that. Like, it's it's a foundational block to get to the point where the government is experimenting with Venom symbiotes to create symbiote soldiers, just like how Jurassic Park 4 was supposed to have horrific human dinosaur hybrid soldiers with guns for arms. And before I get started, please leave a like on this video. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, leave a very long-winded and harsh comment. But you have to do it right now. You can't wait until the video's over to actually see your feelings on it. You have to either decide if you're going to like the video or if you're going to write at least three paragraphs worth of a harsh comment. You know, it's up to you. What, which one's easier? And also, let me know if you have any suggestions for books that I should be covering in the future. I always enjoy reading comics. Released in 1977, written by Larry Hama. That's right, Larry Hama, the guy who pretty much made G.I. Joe what it is, wrote this. An art by the fantastic Tom Lyle. This is Spider-Man The Venom Agenda. The book begins with typical... Parker bad luck, Peter's sick with a headache, congestion, and a cough, and he's riding the subway treated like a pariah, and he has to listen to a blind guy play the accordion. He laments the situation and eventually gets so fed up with the blind musician that he drops all of the spare change he has to shut the guy up, but the blind guy gets mad and tosses the change back at Peter and calls him a Philistine. The old man sitting down the subway car says, That's funny, he doesn't look Arab. <laughs> That is such a fucking great joke. It's not even a joke, because it happens in real life. I should know. <laughs> Philistine, for anyone unaware, means someone who is ignorant or, like, opposed to the arts. Just a couple weeks ago, I was talking to some people that I know, and I can't remember what happened. I think I, I made, like, a joke, and only one person in the group got it, so I called the others Philistines. And someone that I know looked me straight in the face and said, I can't believe you would say something like that with everything that's going on. <laughs> oh God, I fucking lost it. <laughs> that's just a fun little anecdote. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Manhattan, Eddie Brock rides around in the back of a limo with a government agent and member of the NSA's mutant task force, Daryl Smith. Eddie is seemingly in some sort of suicide squad, operation paperclip style, work for the government and will let you live and forgive all your previous crimes kind of situation. And currently he's being tasked with dealing with a particular individual who's causing waves in regards to Operation Zero Tolerance, which was this whole anti-mutant storyline that came around after uh, the Onslaught saga. So you know it's good. Anyway, Agent Smith tells Eddie that he's not telling him to kill J. Jonah Jameson because he wants to keep plausible deniability. And then Eddie gets out of the limo as Peter haplessly walks by, heading to the Daily Bugle building. Eddie says that he knows journalism since he was a journalist once. And what Jameson is doing is crossing the line. You murder people <laughs> and eat their brains.
Eddie forms his goop suit, a.k.a. Venom, and climbs up the side of the building. As they climb, Eddie and Venom are, like, making fun of the U.S. government for not wanting to outright order him to kill Jameson, but they're still being okay with the fact that he's doing it. And then Venom's, like, jingoistically patriotic in this comic for some reason. And he says that they're just following orders to give the just desserts to the villainous traitor that is J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> anyway, Peter tries to enter Jameson's office, but J.J. kicks him out because he doesn't want to get sick. And then Venom smashes through the window. Jameson orders Peter to start taking photos because it's not every day that a hot scoop like this comes right through the window, and Venom says, You're getting a scoop all right. A big scoop taken out of your brain. I want to eat your brain. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Venom is a serial killer. He's a monster that murders people. He's not as bad as Carnage, but he's still a monster that kills people. This episode is brought to you by My Comics, specifically the Custodians Agents of Cross, which I am serializing over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Smokey's Videos. It's over 60 pages of pure comics for only $15, but you can see it serialized weekly over on my Patreon for as little as $2. It is a love letter to the Silver Age filled with fun characters, crazy stories, and even fake advertisements. I'm also also serializing each issue of Destructo Boy, a fun sci-fi zany epic that is fit for the whole family and follows a little robot on a giant space station as he battles crime, villainy, and giant monsters and whatever threats should arise to his home. Each weekly serialized post includes commentary and annotations on the comic. I am also posting commentary tracks for the MCU, the Snyderverse, and any movies in general over at Pop Pop Popcorn, which I will be posting a audio commentary track of any movie and a follow-up discussion video. There's also behind the scenes progress posts of The Custodians as I am working on it, original art, and much more. Anyway, Peter smashes JJ's computer in Venom's face, but it doesn't work very well, and Jonah smashes a chair over Venom and says, Get off of him! He's freelance! He doesn't have health insurance! Meanwhile, Peter has now quickly changed into his Spider-Man costume, and Venom prepares to lob JJ out of the window, and he's like, At least it's actually you, and not that stupid clone that everyone loves for some reason. And something that you'll only know if you're actually reading this comic, and it's just a, a brilliant thing that uh, Larry Hama does, is Peter's dialogue is written phonetically, meaning that the becomes the because he's congested. <laughs> oh my god. Can you imagine how fucking hard it is for him to breathe in that mask? It's skin tight. Oh my god, I had a terrible time wearing a face mask during the pandemic when I, like, was congested or had allergies. I can't imagine what it would be like wearing a Spider-Man mask and being sick. Anyway, Venom tells Spidey that he's putting Jameson down like the mad dog that he is. Also, Mary Jane Watson is now part of this comic because, uh, <laughs> get this, Peter Parker forgot his strobe light, and she is bringing it to him. That's how they get it. MJ in this comic. They could have done his medication or like his allergy pills or something <laughs> but it's his strobe light and you'll see why later back upstairs venom tells spider-man to stand down or else someone's certain secret might be revealed and jameson always the entrepreneurial businessman says that if brock has secrets on spider-man he can ensure an exclusive front page banner headline and byline by him but Venom doesn't take the offer and tosses Jonah out of his 40th floor window. Spider-Man leaps out of the window, no doubt, casting back memories to that fateful night on the George Washington or Brooklyn Bridge. Maybe Spider-Man even considered accidentally making the same mistake. Eh, but no, he saves Jonah just in the nick of time. Doesn't grab him with his webs, he's learned that the hard way. <laughs> And then he webs up to a streetlight, which he uses to swing them both up and around and into a nearby construction site. And meanwhile, Agent Smith is just watching all of this from his car, and he's like, Oh, shit, this is, this is going terribly! Now I have to get Venom out of here and, like, maybe kill Jameson myself. Spidey sits Jameson down in the construction site because he has a lot going on and lifts his mask to try and breathe, and Venom leaps across the street to him and just jukes his way around Spidey and gets his hands back on Jameson, who again tries to bribe Eddie, but Venom fooms Spider-Man away and prepares yet again to kill his mark. But hubris is a thing for villains, so Venom follows Spider-Man down a few levels, and he plans on getting stuff out of the way. He's gonna kill two grown men with one alien symbiote mouth, just like the old saying goes. And how do those teeth work? 
I feel like I bring it up in every goddamn Venom issue <laughs> that he's in. Where do they come from? Where do the teeth appear? Where do the things that Venom eats go? I just assume it sort of like dissolves and is absorbed into its goop body. But if that's the case, why does it have teeth? Like, what is forming those teeth? <laughs> is it still its body? Because he has gums! <laughs> is, is like, <laughs> is when Venom isn't on something, is its mouth like, like sort of sucked inside? Like if you had like, uh... <laughs> I don't know if anybody, you know, remember those little tubs of, like, slime that you could stick your fingers in and make a fart noise, and then if you put something in there, you could sort of, like, wrap it up on itself? Is it like that? <laughs> Is that how the Venom symbiote works? <laughs> Meanwhile, Agent Smith learns that the site has no power, so he has to take the stairs. And then MJ runs in after him and notices a different switch or something, and easily turns the power on and just takes the elevator. Back up top, Spider-Man's skull is repeatedly smashed against the floor as Venom shouts that Spider-Man ruined his life. And even Jonah's like, <laughs> Oh, stop! He's already dead! And then... My God! Venom's gone up to the top ropes! He's, he's, he's breaking the very steel beams themselves! The bolts are popping out completely! By God, there he goes! Spider-Man's too weak to get out of the way! Oh, it's, it's, oh my God almighty, that killed him! Spider-Man's been killed! As God is my witness, he is broken in half! Yeah, so it's just... <laughs> this whole comic is kind of a build-up just so they can recreate this scene from the Spider-Man comic, If This Be My Destiny, when he gets trapped under a bunch of rubble. And they do exactly that, because he gets out! And he walks over, covered in... I don't even want to know what that is. Gas? Oil? Mucus? Venom prepares to attack when MJ shows up and lets loose the power of the strobe light and blinds him for a second before Venom just grabs her and gets ready to kill her. That makes Spider-Man lose it and he tackles Venom out of the construction site down to the ground below. Then he just beats the ever-loving shit out of the monster, unaware that it, they landed on a crate of TNT. Also, I just wanted to point something else out about this comic is that uh, Venom slash Eddie have a like surprisingly strong and vivacious lexicon. I guess it makes sense since Eddie Brock isn't like a stereotypical meathead jock gym rat like he's kind of people think of him as because you know he was a journalist he went to college for journalism all that he's not like oh you know <laughs> it's just weird seeing Venom call Spider-Man a sanctimonious hypocrite. <laughs> Back up top Agent Smith arrives and saves Jonah as MJ witnesses a shit ton of rubble and pipes plummet to the ground which smash and cause a concussive blast that causes the Venom symbiote to freak out allowing Spidey to gain the upper hand then the dynamite explodes and Eddie has a panic attack the construction site is filled with dust and smoke and MJ and Peter escape out into the streets and then Jonah realizes that everyone is left Sometime later on the train, Peter and MJ ride home as they wonder what happened to Eddie Brock and Venom. And she gives him a hug, and Peter's like, ooh, go easy on me, I'm really fucking sore. And MJ tells him that that sure is a shame, because she was thinking of a couple of things that she could do to make him feel better when they get home. And Peter, like every person would be, immediately says, hey, what's a bit of pain to a superhero? And elsewhere, Agent Smith bandages up Eddie as he wonders how the hell Spider-Man got mixed up in this not-assassination attempt. And Eddie says, Spider-Man, I was gonna say something about him, but I can't remember. Not after that dynamite blast went off so close. That's right! Eddie Brock has forgotten that Spider-Man is Peter Parker if, via the tried and true method of getting a concussion. Although it's not like the symbiote got a concussion, right? Like, it would still remember who the former host was. So just Eddie forgot. So the, the symbiote can tell him somehow, I'd imagine. The end! <laughs> yeah, this wasn't really a uh, Agent Venom prelude, like I, I said in the at the beginning of the video, or in my clickbait title. Um, <laughs> it's just one big Spider-Man Venom fight that, like... I like the... It's an interesting idea to have, like, you know, Venom work for the government or whatever, but I don't think they ever do anything else with this until Agent Venom. Uh, maybe, like, um... Dark Avengers, if you want to count that. But, uh, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. <laughs> Are there any good Venom stories that I should cover? Not Donny Cates, because I'm not interested in that. And not The Hunger, because that's obviously the best Venom comic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> what else do I have to say about this? Uh, I, I think it's a neat coincidence, you know, that they did the whole Venom working for the government back in the 90s, and then, 
eventually they decided, hey, let's do that again. Uh, I also feel like this is a good example of a kind of like retconning, I suppose is the word, that Jonah knows that Peter's Spider-Man. Like, come on. They get knocked away through the same fucking doorway. Peter goes in, Spider-Man comes out. Spider-Man sounds like he's sick. Peter, who he just saw, was sick. And, like, Venom is making it super fucking obvious, too. And Jonah's, like, kind of playing dumb. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? Let me, tell me who it is. I'll give you a byline. Um, I don't know. I think it, it, that's, uh, uh, this is a good example of, of, like, building up to that eventual moment to where uh, Peter reveals his identity to Jonah in, is that Dan Slott's run, I probably, I think? But, uh, yeah, there you have it. The original Agent Venom. <laughs> he is not as good as Flash Thompson. <laughs> but uh, as always, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Smokey's videos for early access to videos when available, commentaries, uh, my comics art published weekly, and a bunch of other stuff. And um, check out my Etsy as well to purchase the physical copies of my comics, such as Destructo Boy. Um, follow me on the uh, social medias, at NotBlakeWild. Uh, for my art and whatnot, and I will see you guys next time for a comic that I am very excited to cover. It's one of my favorites. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>